And today I want to show you how to connect Process Automation Designer to your workspace. I've had the privilege of working with the Process Automation Designer for some time now, maybe a couple of months. And the biggest question that I come across and also what people are looking to do is get it on their workspace. You might have seen some of the great videos that are out there around Process Automation Designer. This interface that you see here on my screen uh, really shows how you can truly manage a process. It's a very powerful uh, capability just introduced in our parish release. You can do all kinds of really uh, powerful automation activities, integrations, and just really manage flows. This also affects uh, people like the process owners to be able to do this in an easy, intuitive, drag and drop kind of way. So where you see the process automation unfolding is going to be in the workspace via the playbook. So on the right hand side, you see the playbook shown here, uh, showing all the different stages, the lanes, if you will, from the process automation. If you notice these uh, particular lanes do match with the process automation across the top here. And so uh, it's this is a very, very powerful way to help those fulfillers and agents understand where we are in the process and how to help it along very very cool stuff but the big question that we've been getting is well how do i get my process automation say i make a brand new one by clicking create new how does that end up on my workspace that's what we're going to show you today so there is a link here that i'm going to share it's to the doc site that has how to integrate the playbook with the workspace if you follow this you'll make it happen i'm going to walk you through it and we'll also use this as our guide. So if you go to workspace experience and just go to your, your standard interface, uh, start typing in workspace experience, you start to see all the different configuration opportunities that you have for your workspaces. The one we're gonna wanna go down to is under actions and components, and we're gonna go to contextual side panel. What you'll notice here in the directions, it actually does tell you to go to that same location but it says related items or contextual side panel. That's important because if you want it to, it to show up as a related list, your playbook can show up as a related list. For this demonstration, we're gonna look at it on the contextual side panel, which is this area here on the right. And then you'll click on new and then you'll fill out the, the core form fields here. Uh, the one thing to note here, I think everything else is going to look pretty standard, is going to be this UI component. It's called Now Playbook Experience. They have it here. This is something you're going to enter directly. So let's go take a look at that. If we were to click on New, we have the standard form. We can name it. You have the action name, UI component, and specify UI component. This is where you would enter that Now Playbook experience. Um, there's several to choose from. This is the one you want for it to work and connecting your process automation to your workspace. Um, over here on the right, the workspace in which you want it to tie to, if you did the search and you did the lookup, you'd see all the different workspaces. Uh, hopefully you have a workspace configured. You might've used the guided app creator to get that up and running. Be sure and enter that one in there. All right, there's all of them that are available on the platform will, can be searched for. So for instance, we have agent workspace and there it is. So we're gonna stick with our provider workspace in this example. Now the table in which you want it to associate to. So if you've built a custom app like I did, and this particular uh, record is a custom app and a custom table called provider lifecycle, uh, you would want to make sure that you are using that exact same table. You want to link your process automation design to your specific table. That's where you would do that. You'd select that. Under view, if you're familiar with setting up your workspace, uh, usually here, this whole uh, view here and all these fields are a view that you have called workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and choose workspace there. So other than that, just by adding a, a name there, um, can be anything. Picking the icon is not difficult. You have several to select from. You pick anything you want. After you're done there, you're gonna wanna click save. And because the, the, what, the, what this tells us to do next after we save it is go to the advanced view. So if you're keeping up, 
I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this and go open one that I have already created. I don't wanna recreate this one again. So as you see here, just as we discussed, now we wanna click on advanced view. Now, those of you who are curious, you're gonna notice a lot of fields get created for you. This related list gets populated for you. This is not something I did. Just when upon submission, those get created. So by going to advanced view, now we can go back to the docs link and continue to follow along. And we're going to complete these tabs here. I believe these first two. So under component attributes, you have these three sections. So if we go back to the article here, you notice you're in advanced view, component attributes, the playbook experience ID, uh, you can leave that blank because by leaving a blank of none is provided the global playbook experience is used by default. So go with that if you're just getting familiar with this. There's uh, more advanced features and cool things that you could do. But right now we're gonna leave that empty. So for parent sys ID, it is telling us to enter in this value here. And if you notice, it has one for the following field, table. All right, so you, if you're a copy paster, you can just copy and paste those in. If you wanna type that in, you can type, type those in. So that will get uh, those values on that tab ready to go. On the conditions, if you notice here, there's a script column. Yours might be, yours will be empty. You're gonna to wanna to enter this value in it. That also comes from the article. So if you scroll down here, it's telling you to go to the conditions tab. Under script condition, it does give you that exact value to enter into there. It says this enables to you to show the playbook only when that record uh, is triggered. So it gives you one execution per record. Very cool. Okay, so uh, other common uh, configurations you can manage here. Uh, around your playbook. I'm going to leave all those uh, alone. And you, you pretty much save the record, you update it. And then once you're done with that, you're going to want to go to your playbook. Okay. And you're going to want to go to your workspace. So here we are at the workspace. Um, in order for you to see the playbook on your workspace, you're going to want to create a brand new record and save it. However, in order for it to show, you're going to need to have number one, your trigger conditions met. So the trigger conditions for this particular process is once a record is created. So it's really basic. It's just if, a, if the record gets created, start the process automation. So real simple. If you have other conditions, they all have to be met for them, for this process to kick off and that to be shown on the workspace. Remember that. Number two, the second one that's going to be important is that if you're familiar with using the process automation designer, they do have um, items called placeholders. So when you're adding an activity here, you have placeholders. Um, I've created one with placeholders all the way across here and I've saved it and activated it, but it wasn't showing up on my workspace. It's because you do have to create at least a representation of an actual activity, not a placeholder. So the ones that are the easiest to put on a playbook for testing, um, to put on your process automation for testing in your playbook are gonna be these instructions. Instructions are very, very basic. If you put a brand new instruction, you can configure it. Put something very simple like, um, you know, step one, step one test or something like that, or call it what you need to call it. If it's, uh, if it is something that you pertinent to your process, put it there. It's, it's uh, no harm, no foul. It'll actually help with testing and give context that much quicker. So once this saves, I'm running on a demo instance, so it's probably a little bit slow. Uh, once I get saved and I can activate it, we can go run it. But what you should expect to see, what well, that works is when you create a brand new record, click on provide a life cycle. On the right context menu, you will only see one icon or no icons, but the, but the icon that you chose for your playbook is not going to show yet. If you notice, this is the, the 
that I kind of have from my playbook. It's not here. It won't be there as mentioned until you save the record and the process gets triggered. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And by saving the record, it's creating it. It should initiate the process. And if you notice here, now my playbook is showing itself. There's your quick configuration to be able to get your process automation on your workspace quickly through your playbook. So three terms that you got there, your process automation designer, your workspace and your playbook. Have fun, I hope this helps, thanks.